Hello everyone, I hope you're doing okay. Today we're talking about the Arsenal Mercenary, the direct damage spec for you gunslinging boys. Now, brief disclaimer as usual, I'm kind of an expert on this spec. I've been playing it for many years, but if there's things that I miss over the course of talking about it for like 25 minutes, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. I'm sure your fellow players would appreciate it. Second disclaimer, I know we're going crazy here. Uh, this spec is in a very bad spot right now. If we look at some of the parsing numbers, for example, in Nefra, uh, you're going to notice here that Arsenal is way down here at the bottom of the DPS, averaging at like 16.7k DPS. Uh, this spec is in a very bad spot. It's really a labor of love. If you like playing Arsenal, it's very easy to get into, but the damage just really isn't there, which is kind of sad if you're playing a damage spec. So if you're going to play this spec, keep that in mind. You're not going to be topping any leaderboards using this spec. It's just kind of the way it is. Unfortunate. For your tertiary stats, for accuracy in PvE, you want to get that 110% accuracy every single time. It's very important. In PvP, though, I like to run like 105% accuracy. We do a lot of white damage in this spec, which is kind of important to have a little bit of accuracy, so it's kind of important to have that 105%. For your alacrity, you have two options. Either get a 4.2% alacrity, which is a pretty dank alacrity threshold, or if you have the gear, you can go for a 12.4% alacrity and get a little bit of faster cast time. It's pretty darn nice. I personally run the 12.4, but if you don't have the gear for it, just get that dank... 420 blaze it up alacrity threshold and you should be ready to rock and roll then throw everything else into crit and then you should be good to go for our legendaries here prime ignition is just great it's free passive sustained damage it's going to make your priming shot apply a little debuff to the target which is going to tick every time you use your blazing bullets and your heat seeking missile and your tracer missile it's just free extra damage essentially it's pretty darn nice we also have the option of running Burning Bright. We'll talk about that later on in the video. For our legendaries, Concentrated Fire is going to give you an auto crit on your rail shot every time you use your supercharged gas. It's pretty darn nice. And then finally, Random Charge is going to be giving us stacks of supercharge every time we do damage, or at least a 10% chance to. So it's free stacks of supercharge. We love to see it. Looking over at our combat style, we have a lot of good options here, so bear with me. For now, we're going to be looking at Proficient Tracing. It's going to be helping our Tracer Missiles cast a little bit faster and reduce the heat that it costs. Moving up the line, Power Barrier, just straight DR. We love to see it. Tracing Residue is the sustained option for the spec. You can take Customized Warhead if you want the burst damage. Chafe Flare is a very overpowered defensive cooldown. We love to see it. Energy Rebounder is going to give you more energy shields. It's just kind of the best. You have a couple of options here. Thrill of the Hunt is great for movement in PvE. And then Cult of Surge is great for defensives in PvP. All three of these options are great. Hydros are great for movement. Ultra Dart is a great stun. But Responsive Safeguard is just like the best overall default options. You get a Reflect. It does a little bit of healing. It's just really strong. You can find situations where the other two are useful. But Responsive Safeguard is just the best. Finally, in PvE, you can take gyroscopic alignment jets, so that way whenever you're taking a little bit of roots, etc., you can get a little bit of heat back. Or in PvP, take trauma regulators. It's just kind of the best for, you know, healing. Every time you get attacked with an energy shield, you get a little bit of healing. It's pretty darn nice. But all that is boring. Let's talk about actually doing damage. The spec is relatively straightforward. There's not a lot of interactions here. The first ability that we're going to talk about is this ability here called Supercharged Gas. Supercharged Gas requires 10 stacks of these little supercharged to be activated. Once it has 10 stacks, it will start to glow. If you hit that button, you will get 15% armor penetration, which is gonna make you do more damage. And additionally, every time you use your primary damaging abilities, you're gonna get a little extra uh, bit of alacrity to help you cast a little bit faster. This is great for helping you manage your heat. It vents about 10 heat when you use it. And then the extra alacrity will help you manage your heat along the way. Additionally, it's going to help you slowly but surely do more damage with our high damaging abilities because of that extra armor penetration. But it requires 10 stacks of supercharged gas, which is kind of a pain in the neck. We'd mentioned previously that any damaging ability has a 10% chance to, to grant a stack of supercharge. But eh, that's not, we don't want to just rely on that. The primary way we're going to be generating those supercharges is going to be through our Tracer Missiles. Tracer Missile is a boring ability, I'll be honest with you. It's a 1.5 second cast. It does like 19k damage. 
but it does a couple of extra nice things. For one, it builds a stack of supercharge, which is gonna help you get back to the supercharged gas very, very quickly. For two, it applies heat signature to the target, which is gonna make our other abilities do more damage, which is very, very nice. For three, it's gonna sunder the target, which is gonna make the target have less armor, which is gonna make your abilities do more damage. So it's more of like a passive buff ability than anything else, but it's pretty darn nice. Additionally, it's gonna be slowly building our stacks of power barrier, which is gonna make us taste like, take less damage. Additionally, it's gonna be giving us stacks of tracer lock, which is gonna be making our rail shots do more damage. It's a passive way to buff our other abilities. Tracer missile is kind of the foundational ability that all the other abilities are based on here in Arsenal Merc. It's a really good time. So build supercharge, gives you a whole bunch of buffs, makes the target take more damage. It's just in a pretty good spot but it doesn't really do a whole lot of damage. Just know that it's kind of our background filler ability. But I don't wanna do just filler abilities. Let's actually talk about doing damage. Well, good. Let's work from the top of our little priority system here and slowly tick our way down. The first ability we're gonna talk about here is Priming Shot. Priming Shot does a couple of things. For one, you shoot the target, boop, does a fair bit of damage, eh, not, not great, not terrible, but it does a couple of other things here that's actually pretty cool. For one, it marks the target, and marks targets take 5% more damage from range attacks, so it's gonna make all your other abilities do more damage. It's nice, it's nice. Additionally, it's also gonna make all your other raid team members do more damage, which is, you know, pretty nice. Additionally, it's going to be applying this debuff here of burning primed shot. This comes from our legendary right here. And what this means is that every time we attack with like a blazing bolts or a tracer missile or a heat seeker missile, it's going to tick for extra damage. So essentially every time we use this priming shot, we see that we get this burning primed ignition on the target. And then all our other primary damaging abilities will tick that damage and essentially blow it up with a bunch of extra little ticks, which is very nice. It's very, very nice. Additionally, it makes your next Tracer Missile auto-cast. So you can see here, I didn't have to go through and spend the entire time casting that 1.3 second cast on Tracer Missile. Instead, if Tracer Missile starts to glow, that means you can use it instantly. So you can see how these abilities are starting to kind of filter into each other, right? Tracer Missile makes all of our other abilities do more damage. Priming Shot makes all of our abilities take more damage and gives us free Tracer Missiles. There are ways that these abilities are kind of feeding into each other over and over and over again. But that's pretty straightforward. Let's talk about the next primary damaging ability here with Heat Seeker Missiles. Heat Seeker Missiles, frankly, not that interesting. It does tick our Priming Shot damage, which is nice. It does more damage to the target if you have your Tracer Lock on it, which is nice but it doesn't really do much more than that. It's just you fire a bunch of missiles at the target, boop, and the target explodes for a whole bunch of damage. It's pretty straightforward. It does have a relatively long cast time and it consumes a fair bit of heat. However, it's just essentially free damage, not a lot of interactions here. We wanna be pressing it as often as possible. Next, let's talk about rail shot. If you look here, uh, I can't actually press the rail shot button yet. That's kind of sad. I wanna be using my rail shot. It makes a very satisfying noise. What's missing? Well, rail shot can only be used on vulnerable targets. Vulnerable targets are typically defined as taking periodic damage or a dot. However, if we use our tracer missile, it will apply this little stack of heat signature to the target, which makes the target vulnerable, which we can now use our rail shot. I mentioned previously how using tracer missile will slowly build our stacks of tracer lock. Once you reach five stacks of tracer lock, you now have my permission to use your rail shot. Rail shot will do a fair bit of damage, make a very satisfying noise, and has a very high chance to crit. So if you hit boop, rail shot, it makes a very nice noise. We only wanna be using it when it's glowing at five stacks. It's a pretty straightforward ability. Not a lot of interactions here. It's more the end results of our interactions rather than the purpose of our interactions, if that makes sense. So heat seeker missiles and rail shots are like very needy girlfriends. They just consume, consume, consume but they do a whole lot of damage and they're a lot of fun, so you know, totally worth it. Let's talk next about our next primary damaging ability here in the form of Electronet. Electronet has a very long cooldown, but it does a lot of damage. It will slow the target, it will hinder the target. What that means is that if you apply Electronet to the target, the target can no longer do things like roll or teleport or Essentially, it's, it's a very, very dangerous slow, especially if you use it on like a sorcerer or if you use it on like a sniper, it prevents them from using their high mobility actions. So it's a very nice ability, it has a very long cooldown though. 
So what that means is that it gets bumped a little bit further down in the priority system because it has such a long cooldown, you're not gonna get as many of them throughout the fight. So we'd rather be prior to prioritizing our highest damaging abilities over our Electro Net, but it's essentially just a whole bunch of damage applied over a very short period of time. If you're in PVP, throw it on like a weak target to prevent them from getting away. It's a pretty good ability. Now let's talk about the bread and butter here in the form of Blazing Bolts. Blazing Bolts does like 35,000 damage over the course of three seconds, which isn't really that much, if we're being honest. Like over the course of two global cooldowns, that's like 16, 17, 18,000 damage per second. So not that impressive. But what it does do, if you use it, you can see it ticks a whole bunch of times. That's interesting because Priming Shot damage is triggered by Blazing Bolts. So you can see here, if we use Blazing Bolts when the damage or the, has Priming sh Shot on the target, it explodes for a whole bunch of extra damage. What this means is essentially, we want to be using Blazing Bolts only when we have the Priming Shot debuff on the target. So if we come here and we use our, priming, or our Blazing Bolts on a Priming Shot target, it's gonna do a whole bunch of damage that it otherwise wouldn't do. It's a great little filler ability here, but it's very far down our party system just because the other ability is doing so much more damage. Additionally, Blazing Bolt's cooldown is actually reset by Tracer Missile once every eight seconds. So you see here, I just used my Blazing Bolts. Now I can use it right away again because I use my Tracer Missile. This can happen once every eight seconds. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna get in the habit of learning essentially how long it takes between Blazing Bolts that you can use your extra Tracer Missile to get those Blazing Bolts back which makes it kind of fun because you can do things like applying your priming shot, go into a Blazing Bolts for a whole bunch of damage, and then use another Tracer Missile, and then go right back into that Blazing Bolts. It's a pretty fun little interaction here. It's a great way to be spamming the, the very fun looking Blazing Bolts ability because it just like fills the entire screen up with a whole bunch of damage. It's pretty darn nice, pretty darn nice. Let's briefly walk through all of these one last time to make sure that we're all on the same page. Supercharged Gas is built from Tracer Missile, and by doing damage, every time you see Supercharged gla Gas glowing, hit it, it's pretty darn important. Moving the line here, Priming Shot applies a debuff to the target, which gives it burning, which is gonna make all of your damage abilities essentially just do more damage. It's pretty darn nice, free damage, we love to see it. Heat Seeker Missiles do more damage whenever you have your Tracer Lock on the target. It's free damage, you'll love to see it. Rail Shot, when it's glowing, click it pretty much every single time, Free damage. Electronut, hit it every single time because it's just a lot of damage very quickly. It's great for use on like low, low health targets that you don't want to get away. Blazing Bolts, only use when you have the burning debuff on the target. Otherwise, it's kind of a DPS loss, which is kind of tragic. And then just fill with Tracer Missile and you should be ready to rock and roll. So... We've covered all of the you know, fun, high damaging abilities here that you could be spamming over and over again in this little priority system here. This is the priority system, by the way, which means that you know the most important ability is up here at the top and then just work down to the bottom and you should be ready to rock and roll. There is one exception though. Instead of just spamming all of your high damaging abilities over and over and over again, when you're just getting started in the spec, you're gonna follow this very basic rule. If you get above 30% heat, you will use your rapid shots, which is really sad to say. Rapid shots, not that fun of an ability. However, if you are not careful with your heat in this spec, it will destroy you. Heat in Arsenal works because every single time you use an ability, your heat's gonna go up, and the higher your heat gets, the slower it regenerates, which means you can get trapped like this, where suddenly all my heat's been used, and now it's regenerating very, very slowly. It's a very sad time when you see an Arsenal player stuck here trying to slowly regenerate their heat. The way we counteract this is by being proactive and using our rapid shots whenever you get above like 30 to 35 heat. This is really sad. It's very sad. However, it does a couple of little benefits for us. For one, it gives us a second supercharge, and for two, it gives you a second to breathe. It's a proactive way to be managing your health or your heat to make sure that you're not like totally screwing the pooch with your heat management. So for now, if you get above like 30 to 35% heat, please be hitting your rapid shots. 
We also have our get out of jail free card of Vent Heat. Vent Heat will make your next ability generate no heat and then we'll vent 50 heat over the next three seconds. We wanna be using our Vent Heat on abilities like Blazing Bolts since it's gonna give you three full seconds of not generating any heat and then it's gonna vent 50 heat over the next three seconds. So it's a good little combo if you run into issues. However, you only get one of those every like minute 45. So be careful, all right? Be careful if you're above like one minute and, or I'm sorry, if you're above 30% heat, please, please, please be careful. So how would this actually play? Well, let's talk about a brief opener here to make sure that we're all on the same page. The opener, we're gonna start off by using our Tracer Missile because we can pre-cast it before the boss starts pulling, right? We get a full second and a half of casting before we're ready to go, and then we apply our debuff to the target, so it's pretty darn nice. From there, we're essentially gonna work down the basics of this line. You can use like Electronet first, since it's a, just a whole bunch of damage that we can throw up front, and then just get that cooldown running as fast as possible, and then just essentially work down the line of our little priority system. So we go like pre-cast, and then vent heat, and now we'll work down the line of our priority system. All right, Rail Shot isn't glowing yet, so we'll come back here. Oh, and just spam this little mini rotation over and over and over again. Some people will go for the Rail Shot squeeze into the opening little segments of, um, of our supercharged gas. It's kind of up to you. And then from here, we're just kind of juggling, juggling, juggling. Uh, this spec is not that difficult, I'll be honest with you. You can just build this little basic priority system over and over and over again, and then just get comfortable using the spec. You, if, and the beautiful thing about a priority system like this is that if you mess it up, uh, it's not the end of the world. For example, I just used a Blazing Bolts when I didn't have my uh, burning priming shot on the target. Oh, I, I just used my rail shot when I should have been using my heat seeking missiles. Oh no, oh no, what a, what a terrible crime this has been. Uh, yeah, that's fine. That's just like do better next time. It's the main advantage that the spec has is that you're not like bound to a rotation. If you just come here and just be spamming all these abilities kind of back to back to back, you're gonna be just fine on this spec. Like you're not gonna be topping the charts and the way that you get up in damage is by really min, -ma or min maxing and making sure you're hitting the most important abilities in order. However, if you come here and you're just spamming like tracer missiles and all these fun little abilities over and over and over again, like you're gonna do just fine damage. Just follow this little basic priority system of priming shot, and then heat seeker missile is your next important ability, then a glowing rail shot, and then blazing bolts whenever you still have a burning priming shot on the target, and you should be ready to rock and roll. This spec is not that hard, I'll be honest with you. If you can hit glowing buttons, you can probably play this spec. <sighs> but this is boring, I'll be honest with you. This is, this is, not, this is not fun. What's more fun though, is just fishing for massive crits. We can go fishing in this spec. Let me pop over my loadout here to Arsenal Fun, boop. And what we've done here is we've changed our combat style just a little bit. For one, we've taken the um, signature shot here, which is gonna make our priming shot do more damage when it's affected by our heat signature. 50% more damage to be exact. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Additionally, we've taken customized warhead to make sure that we're getting more chances at crits on our heat seeker missiles. We've also gone ahead and swapped out for the burning bright tactical. What this means is that dealing damage with blazing bolts is going to make your next priming shot do 25% more damage, stacking up to four times. So what that means is if you hit the target with blazing bolts, you're gonna slowly build these four stack of priming bolts, and now our priming bolts does 100% more damage. This combined with our priming shot doing 50% more damage to targets affected by heat signatures means that if we go crazy, we can go like priming shot for massive hopefully massive damage like 40k and then a heat seeker missile and then a rail shot and do a whole bunch of crits your priming shot crit can get up to like 80k damage i've seen some people get up there really high with like 100k crits um this is a lot of fun i'll be honest with you it's not exactly the most like reliable way to play the game you're because you're fishing for crits in a spec that doesn't have a lot of crit chance but for example you just saw we had a 75k crit uh that's a lot of damage and that's kind of fun especially for those of you who are looking to pvp in the spec uh, I would definitely recommend giving that a test because that way you can be hitting for one massive crits with your rail shots, for two massive crits with your priming shots, and then for three massive crits with your heat seeker missiles. It's just a lot more fun than the sad sustained damage that this spec brings to the table right now. So it is out there as an option for you if you choose to hit it. 
Sometimes if you get really lucky with your back-to-back -back crits, you could do things like, oh, a 79K priming shot into like a 40K heat seeker, into like a 40K rail shot or a 50K rail shot. Uh, it's just a lot of damage that you can be squeezing out as often as possible. So it's a great way to melt people if you get lucky with your crits. <sighs> Let's talk about our defensive cooldowns because this is really where Arsenal comes to shine. Let's talk quickly about Energy Shield. Energy Shield, when you have the Trauma Earlier's debuff, will default by just giving you 25% DR, which is pretty darn nice. And then every time you're attacked, you will slowly build stacks of Trauma Regulators if you're taking the buff, which means that every time you'd attack, you'll build up to 10 stacks of Trauma Regulators. When the shield ends, it will heal you for 4% of your health. It's pretty darn nice. Cult of Overload at default will rapidly heal you up to 35%, or if you're taking Cultal Surge, it'll heal you up to 60%. It's pretty darn nice. Optional, Responsive Safeguards. It's a Reflect. It reflects 50% of damage that's done to you. It's pretty nice. Additionally, every time you're attacked with this Reflect up, you'll heal for 5% of your health. Uh, it's a great way to be cheesing mechanics and to be doing that little bit of extra healing to yourself when all else is failing. Finally, we have our Chafe Flare. Chafe Flare will reduce all of your threat towards enemy targets, which is pretty darn nice. Additionally, it's gonna give you two chances to absorb a force tech attack, so any yellow damage will be absorbed two in a row. And additionally, it's gonna give you a 35% chance to dodge any ranged or melee abilities. So it's a great little overpowered DCD. It has like a 45 second cooldown. It's pretty darn nice. Those are our defensive toolkit. As a rule of thumb, you wanna be going like Energy Shield, Reflect, Colto. I'm sorry, Energy Shield, Chafe Flare, Reflect, Colto, and then hopefully you'll have an extra Energy Shield by then. Just pop your defensive cooldowns, you should be fine. Finally, let's talk about our healing. We really have a couple of healing options. The first is Emergency Scan. Emergency Scan is an instantly activated ability. You heal for like 20K. Not great, not terrible. It beats a poke in the eye if you really have to. Sometimes you want to have like hard cast healing. You can heal yourself with rapid scan. It's an option. Uh, not that great though, if we're being honest. And finally, we have our Colto Shot. Colto Shot heals you for 6K. It can be used on the move. It's kind of a pathetic little ability, but it does build a supercharged gas, which is very nice, especially if you're like running around between combat. You can be slowly building these stacks of supercharged gas and you should be ready to rock and roll. Finally, your regen will also build 10 stacks of supercharged gas. So you don't have to spam your cult load shot to build those stacks of supercharge. You can just use, for example, a warm hands or your recharge and reload or your push-ups, etc., And you'll slowly build your 10 stacks of supercharge. But that's really, uh, that's really it. That's really it. This is an interesting spec right now in the fact that it does like no damage. It's a very straightforward spec. It's rather forgiving. If it's like baby's first PVP, you could probably do worse than playing Arsenal. But if you wanna find something that's more interesting, you can go to your combat style and then you can swap to Vanguard and then you do like 40% more damage. So, I mean, there's always that. It's out there. It's a possibility. If you like this video, uh, like and comment and subscribe. Drop some fat knowledge down in the comments. Or, uh, or don't. I'm not your mom. You do what you like. All right? Take care now. Goodbye.